Good. What? Wait. Is, uh, but maybe I should just make a cocktail, and then we can talk some more about that in a minute. Yeah. While I make the cocktail, so this is a simple cocktail to memorize if you happen to have blood oranges laying around. Now, uh, blood oranges are going out of season in Texas, so you're going to uh, laugh at me trying to squeeze any juice out of these things but uh, they are still available for the next few months because they're in season until May in California and they ship worldwide, or at least US-wide. Uh, but we're gonna start, and this is higher in alcohol than most ryes, uh, so I'm gonna use one and a half ounces instead of the two ounces that's recommended. If you don't have Willet Rye, uh, I would recommend Wild Turkey 101 Rye. Wild Turkey Rye is an excellent, just mid-tier go-to rye. You can put that in anything, and since it's like 20 to $30 at most for a bottle, you won't feel too bad about it. Now that we've done our two, one and a half to two ounces of rye, depending on strength, everything else from here on out is only a half ounce. 15 of those. Easy peasy. So we take half ounce onto race, half ounce agave syrup. Now some recipes call for simple in this. I like uh, agave just because it pairs well with onto race, which also uses agave. Mm -hmm. Why mix sweeteners? Yeah. Yes. And can you hand me a uh, the squeezer? The, Citrus, it should be in this drawer. It is not. It is over there for some reason. Oh. This one? Yes. Thank you. Can I talk about what's going to happen this far? Oh, yes, yes. Okay, because that's why everything's out of place, because we just yeah. cleaned up a whole <laughs> lot for a thing. Volta, talk about what's happening this Friday. I'm going to be on Chef Nikki's show, uh, Thai Takeover. Uh, so it's a, it's a series on YouTube if you want to check it out. Um, Chef Nikki is the owner of Asian Mint in Dallas. Uh, so she'll come over and like based on what kind of ingredients I have on hand in the fridge or in the pantry, um, things that aren't booze because we do have Quite a few bottles. Oh yeah, she's <laughs> gonna judge us so hard when she opens up the pantry. <laughs> yeah. But I'm super excited, um, excited to learn and, and see like what kind of delicious food she comes up with. So yeah, that'll that'll air in a couple of weeks. Uh, but we're we're doing the recording on Friday. Yes, and I'm sure that uh, her. YouTube channel will be in the uh, yes the comments of this. Yeah, I'll be sure to, to share that. Yes, I'm. Oh, I'm look at this blood orange! Wow. Yeah, so blood orange has a unusual pigment that's not often found in citrus. Often, more often found in flowers and things like raspberries. Oh. Uh, you know, you know, it's funny reading the Wikipedia entry on this, trying to find some blood orange facts. Not that often. There's not that many blood orange facts, interestingly enough. Uh, they said it tastes like raspberries. I taste no raspberry. I've got a weird palate. Yeah. I do not taste raspberry at all in a blood orange. I taste Campari, mm. which I think is what Campari is made with. Yeah. <laughs> but I guess, yeah, sure. Call me a lush. But now I'm going to take this very dry blood orange and try to squeeze some juice out of it. But we're trying to get around a half ounce to an ounce. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, David, food. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have the same feeling. I'm looking forward to some of that later, too. Uh, and hi, Vic. Hey. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay. Oh my gosh, there's nothing in this. I'm glad that I have. No, there is. It's coming out. I'm glad that I have <laughs> an extra. <laughs> so these are a little difficult to juice. It's because I need a couple of these. Uh, yeah, those are just punches. dried out. Wait, did you get? Um, have some pressure on this. Well, I wanted to use the the older ones for this. Oh. I've got an extra one here. Okay. That was one of the fresher ones. All it's right. my backup orange. Well, I'm just trying to help you out here. Well, now we have three oranges, just in case. Ah, oh, this one's working better. It must have all all the liquid pooled up on one side. Yeah. Ah. Okay, we're gonna get another orange. This one. I got this yeah, one too. Okay. Why not? Where'd my knife go? Yes. Uh, now. Oh, that one smells really good. Mm, okay, that's a yeah. fresher one. <laughs> if you so if you if you don't know when you're shopping for fruit, uh, there's a there's a tip that a lot of us millennials didn't learn because I don't know we we don't shop for fruit that much. Uh, if you you want to feel the fruit, you want to pick it up. And it should feel heavier than you think it feel than it think you think it should feel. Like, wow, this should feel like if it feels like a tennis ball or it feels like hollow inside, then that fruit is dried out. It's been sitting on that shelf for a while. <laughs> Nothing in that. <laughs> uh, and you should get a different one. Yeah, for some reason we just skip that chapter of development, learning how to pick fresh fruit. I mean, why should we? It's always available. We can get fruit from the store. And also, typically, why would a store not have fresh fruit out? Don't make me do your job for you, store. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, I'm being Dan a Karen has about opinions that. about shopping for fruit, apparently. Just saying, like, like, how dare you? All right. First of all, how well, dare this you? one smells really good. Yes, let me clean all that. Yeah, blood orange juice. It is blood red, so it will stain a bit. Mm -hmm. So I'm being careful. That's why I stepped away for a bit. Get yeah. It now, pardon me. I'm going to get some ice on here. We're going to just shake this up and then strain it into. Oh yeah, this glass. So the rosemary is not required, but it's really fun, you know, a fun garnish. You could also swap it out for like sage yeah. or some other green thing. <laughs> yes, did we do a full circle? Yeah, we did. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, thank you, David. I, I agree it is a great tip. <laughs> <laughs> we... You just don't know how to shop anymore. Oh. I don't think that is a good thing. Why do you? I'm shaking this. I'm, I'm just beating the crap out of it. I'm not trying to do any nuance on the shake. I want to get some little ice pellets. I want to make this really cold. I want to whip up a lot of, a lot of air into it. So that's why it's not the subtle shape. So if you do like a martini shake where you're just trying to do that quietness. Mm -hmm. I don't, know, I don't know why I got it in my in my head thinking about it the other day. Oh, it's because I made a martini yeah. yesterday. Yeah. So you'll see people like try to make as much noise as they possibly can when they make a martini. That is not. That is incorrect. This is what an actual martini is supposed to sound like. Maybe we can do a martini episode. I would love to do a Not a boring episode. martini, like a fun one, like with pretty colors or something. A martini is a cocktail. <laughs> is, is gin with a little vermouth and either a lemon or It's not very olive. fun to paint. <laughs> Just because it's in a martini glass doesn't make it a martini. <laughs> okay, fine. Well, this smells amazing. Yes, we will do. We will do a two, like a, a martini two ways. Yes. I guess we'll do. Yeah. We'll do the Dan version, the boring version, and the fun way, which the is way. which is vodka <laughs> or gin. I, I waffle on those two, uh -huh. or it is whatever, like a. So you're not a purist then. 
I'm not a purist. I'm just... Okay, we gotta do this guy. Let's hold him up. Oh, he doesn't want to stand up like the other guy did. Oh, it's okay. It's not, it's not big enough. Well, we'll still just stick that hole yeah. in there. All right, because yeah. we just want to pour it over mm -hmm. the orange. And then we just pour that beautiful orange, blood orange color in right to the top. Okay. And then there you have it. So nice. A hot-blooded cocktail. Uh, some recipes that I've seen include hot sauce. I see no reason to do that between the spiciness of the rye and the really this. spiciness of Ancho Reyes. <laughs> I have a little technical difficulty with the garnish. <laughs> Ooh, that is good. That is very good. Let's see. That ancho chili, which if you did not know, is the dried version Ooh, of a poblano bean. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's right. So it is like pepper based. Yeah. There's a little bit of heat and it's it's very nice. Yeah. Like it would make for a great brunch cocktail, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they say to put it in a oh. Nick and Nora or a coupe glass, but I like this little guy. Yeah. Fits the uh, the orange wedge better. Mm -hmm. mm. Right, let me get set up for the painting. Yes, and, and like David was David was mentioning about the uh, the tip for watermelons as well. Same thing. Yeah, you know, watermelon will feel a lot heavier. Oh, when, then it's, you would think it when it's fresh. Yes, when it's juicy. Juicy. Yeah. Now, David, since you worked at a farmer's market, I've heard some people talk about uh, looking for a white spot on the bottom to say that it was, I don't know, outside or raised in the sun or something along those lines. I am not 100% on that tip. Seems ra rational. At least that they left it out in the field long enough for it to ripen. Can you add me to the stream, please? Oh, yeah, I help. <laughs> oh, and Becca Manning is saying, for the first time in my life, I live near a farmer's market. Oh, that's awesome. You're so lucky. Yes, I had... Becca, you're so lucky. <laughs> yes, I had a similar experience when... Where are we going? What are we doing with this? I'm moving to this can. Add the stream. And then I move this one from the screen, mm -hmm. and I switch over to this guy, and I move this one over here. Look at that. You got it. <laughs> All right, so now it's on to the fun part. Um, right, I'm getting confirmation from both Becca and David that the, uh, the, the fail spot on the bottom is a good sign for watermelon. Oh, okay. Good to know. I'm excited for watermelon season. I think that's like August or something, July, August. Yeah, I have no idea. I have no idea what watermelon is. I know it's rhubarb season. Oh, yeah. I have no idea where to get rhubarb. If anybody knows where to get rhubarb in Dallas, please let me know. I can't <laughs> find it anywhere. All right, so let's get started with uh, the watercolor painting. So this is a fun little little chalice a little glass and if you notice like uh the shape of it is kind of like a curved line but it's a little bit wider at the top so it's like in a kind of increase the width here and then kind of decrease a little bit further down so i'm gonna just uh roughly sketch it out uh just having two lines that are kind of going towards each other a little bit and then I'm going to connect them with a curved line at the bottom here. So it's going to be a little bit rounder. And then I'm going to go ahead and like sketch out an oval shape uh, right here to like show the surface of the glass. Just to kind of help me work with this shape a little bit and then before I finish this off, I will do my half of a uh, orange slice, and that's just going to be half, like a half circle shape. And then I'm going to erase this extra line since you technically won't be able to see it in the glass. It's behind the orange slice. All right. 
Uh, yeah. Uh huh. Oh, thank you. Whole Foods. Uh, Delphine is also asking about rhubarb. Apparently, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that is saying that oh, no, that's, uh, that's Twee. Sorry, I thought that was Becca. That was Twee. Chef Twee, thank you for letting me know that Whole Foods has uh, rhubarb. rhubarb. Yeah, I'll we'll have to check it out. Thank you. And uh, and David is saying that uh, July is best for watermelon. Ah, nice. Thank you for that uh, pro tip. <laughs> yeah, we've got an insider having insider. worked at Farmer's Market. <laughs> All right, so for this... Um, the orange wedge, I'm just going to bring this in a little bit closer. Uh, I'm going to do these little uh, slices, which are like the, the pulp. And they're essentially like little, little triangles, or if you think of them like little pizza slices that go around. Whichever resonates with you, pizza slices or triangles, you know. Uh, and then here at the bottom of the glass, it's going to be another kind of uh, two little lines that are going to go just slightly outward, and then they're going to connect, be connected by a curved line, like this. And then finally, the base of the glass is just another, like, oval shape. So don't stress out about, uh, you know, if you're sketching this along following with me, like, just kind of rough, approximate shapes. Um, you're always welcome to, like, switch up the, the glass shape, too, you know, whatever is easier for you. Um, I just like to like mix it up because I get tired of <laughs> painting the same, like the, <laughs> the straight glass with like two parallel lines. I got a little, a little tired of that. <laughs> yes. Uh, speaking of things that are interesting, uh, Becca was suggesting growing rhubarb. Oh. Apparently they're perennial and easy like to grow. In your on your balcony? Yeah. We, well, I, and I'm thinking now that oh, you wait, mentioned we it. we do have a... I do have a garden plot, I've not... <laughs> yes, yes, you do have a garden plot, but, yeah, but I was thinking about a British baking show, or Bake Off, where they would talk about growing their own rhubarb, like just having a big plot of it. Oh, I don't remember that, but... I mean, I yeah, people bake with rhubarb all the time. Yeah, I think it's basically a weed. So, it can go nuts. Mm. Alright. Also, on that topic, I, I really want to try to make some dandelion wine. Oh my gosh, Dan, let's do it. I've always wanted to try dandelion in any form. I, I hear people use it in salads. I'm fascinated by that. Yeah. We should just grow dandelion. Really irritate all the neighbors. Uh, yeah. I'm sure the HOA will come a-knocking. Whatever, they they look pretty. They do. Oh, we got, oh duh, sprouts, yes. Patrizia is saying sprouts. Oh, yeah, of course, freaking sprouts. Yeah. Okay, we'll have to visit there soon. And if Sprouts or Whole Foods would like to sponsor an episode, we are open. Yes, we. we I will. I will happily make a rhubarb cocktail <laughs> and rosemary. Yeah. Oh yeah, rosemary. Rosemary is also basically a weed. That's why you see it growing all the time outside of uh, Italian restaurants. Oh yeah. All right, well, back to the painting. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I just pre-mixed, um, I, I basically like went into my palette and I have a couple of different reds, like some are warmer, some are a little cooler, and I just I just like to mix them all together to get like a kind of in-between red, and it just makes it more fun when you get to like mix it up a little bit. Uh, and I'm just gonna use kind of like this this mix of red to paint inside, or like the top portion, but also inside of the glass. So I'm just painting on dry paper. I didn't add any water because I want to retain control over this area. So just filling up this shape with this red. And as you notice, I left a little bit like an unpainted edge of the glass. And I did that so that you can see, like, give the impression that you're looking at, like, the surface, the top uh, portion of the glass. So that kind of helps it, like, uh, make it stand out a little bit so it's not all, like, blended in. Are people having trouble hearing? No, no one's saying anything. Okay. 
but I don't want them to not be able to hear you. Oh, well, thank so I'm you. adjusting the microphone. Well, thank you, Dan. Yes. Um, oh, on that on that note, since I, yeah. I have the stage for a uh, moment, uh, we we'll get stage. Patrizia saying that, that Lowe's has rhubarb seedling. Uh, I would have no idea how to plant rhubarb. I guess I assume yeah. that it. Uh, I'm guessing from a seed. Patricia wants to come over and plant rhubarb seeds. <laughs> yes. Yes, and uh, and David is painting, so we have participants. Oh, awesome, awesome. So uh, next up is going to be our highlight. So before this completely dries, I'm going to clean off my brush, and I'm going to just kind of lift off some color so I'm, I'm like dragging my brush and then i'm wiping it on this towel and i'm repeating this process a couple of times so essentially you want to do that like wiping it off is very central because otherwise you'd be reintroducing that color back in there and now that i have a nice highlight so i guess to explain you know the highlight is like the light source hitting the glass and it's just a small element, a small, like very quick technique that you can do to uh, bring more dimension to whatever shape you're sketching. Uh, and for this, the cocktail itself, I'm gonna add a touch more red, just so that it has a little bit, cause it's dried out for me and, and I think it looks a little too light. So I wanna punch up the color. So I'm just grabbing some red and dropping it on the opposite side of the highlight because I want want the highlight to still be visible so I'm not painting on top there. All right. And I'll actually leave this surface um, with just one layer so I'm not going to add any more paint because um, when you look at the glass with the cocktail, like the top surface is usually just a shade, like a touch bit lighter in value than the other, the rest of um, the drink. And when you have that differentiation in colors or, uh, sorry, values, it just makes it look a little bit more like dimensional or realistic. All right, so here I got my my highlight and next up is gonna be the orange slice and actually um, so this blood orange I'm gonna use the same red that I mixed up since um, you saw the blood orange is very very dark in color so I'm just gonna kind of do little little lines here to kind of give the impression of the pulp so you can just like do little little brush marks or paint them entirely, um, whichever, whichever like works for you. I like to encourage people, you know, I'm just like giving you some guidelines, but I encourage you to try out different, different ways of how you want to represent the same thing. And then finally, um, the, the edge of the orange is kind of like a dark orange. I'm going to mix in just a touch, touch of red in here. I'm gonna paint the rind. There we go. And I will leave this, um, the area in between like these little, the pulp and the rind, um, I'll leave it unpainted just because it'll, it'll look better that way. Um, let's see, next up is our rosemary and for that, just gonna grab a little bit of green from my palette. Mm. Oh, uh, I was just I was just looking up how to actually plant rhubarb. Oh. Uh, on the uh, seedlings, apparently the seedlings take years to grow, but you can buy crowns of rhubarb, and they will just grow for years. Well, then let's get some crowns. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Also, uh, we've got some questions here from David about uh, masking, frisket, all that stuff. Oh, which yes. is funny because when one of our very first streams, like years ago, I think it was Pat that was asking yes. about frisket. It was Pat. Thank you, Pat, and thank you, David. So, uh, on the subject of frisket, I will say that I quite hate it. <laughs> um, it is, I absolutely try to avoid it only because I've just always have had trouble with using it like frisket is uh for those that are not familiar it's it's like this medium that you you paint it on a surface and it protects your paper 
from paint getting in there. So like you can erase it essentially and like leave that area blank or, or like the paper color. Um, I have always had trouble. Like whenever I erase, I usually like will tear up the paper or honestly, I just quite hate frisket. Mm -hmm. And also, oh my God, frisket also dries up. So you buy a bottle, you use it once. And then like three months later, you remember you have this frisket and you're like, oh, maybe I should try this again. And guess what? It's completely dried up. So you can't use it again. <laughs> anyway, um, thanks for coming to my frisket TED talk, but that's how I feel about it. <laughs> oh, uh, well, very awkward segue on that. Yeah. But anybody else that's in the Dallas Plano area that wants to go to the TEDx, conference in uh Plano oh, yes uh, TEDx Plano yeah yes if you are going please say hello to Volta she'll be yeah, there yeah I'll be there I um just FYI I'm not speaking or presenting I'm just going for yeah. like fun to see to see what it's like yes oh yeah and, and, and yeah dude it's funny that they uh, that most people associate uh, masking with Photoshop but the mask itself was from the frisket terminology, I believe, oh. that was used in Photoshop. Wow. That's where it was adopted. Well, thank you for sharing that. Uh, and on to the very last portion of the painting is adding or painting the glass here at the bottom. So I'm using this uh, kind of periwinkle blue. It's a very light very nice blue actually but it is a premix color by daniel smith not affiliated <laughs> with my husband daniel smith <laughs> who would have thought that multiple people would have that name yeah but also watercolor brand a very very good one actually um so i just like really like to play up with different like blues or grays for my shadows or or any areas that are um designated as glass so i'm just going to use this a little bit like i diluted I'm diluting it with water so it's going to be fairly light. And then I'm just going to kind of outline these lines and just paint along the lines here. I'll add a little bit more paint on the right hand side because I have, you know, my light source is coming from the left, so there's like a little bit of a lighter portion here and then this side is going to be a, a touch darker. And then I'm going to clean off my brush and just kind of blend in so that it has a smooth transition from the lighter value on the left to the darker on the right. All right, and there you have it, a hot blooded orange uh, cocktail <laughs> watercolor painting. Very pretty. Thank you. Oh, and I guess I didn't mention, I just kind of was working um, the way I painted the, what do you call it, rosemary, mm -hmm. is I just like did little, also used kind of the entirety of the brush and just did little, little tiny lines all over just to give like quick little, little brush strokes for that. All right. Yes. <laughs> Very nice. We have comments. Oh, thank you so much. Airbrush with an air tank. It, it, I, it's a, uh, a, <laughs> a weird like stream of consciousness that's been going on here where we've talked about Photoshop. <laughs> and then when you associate things that were now completely associated with Photoshop and photo processing. Oh, airbrush. Okay, airbrush. I get it. Yes, I get it. Yes. Okay. Had to be there, but now yeah, I'm here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> With you, yeah, you were busy painting. We were just like chatting up over here. Uh, but yeah, and, and it's funny, like when you talk about airbrushing, I'm old too. I think of like at the beach where you yeah. would have those t-shirts that yeah. were airbrushed. Yeah, I think of the only time I ever got makeup airbrushed oh, was for our God. wedding. And that was a very weird experience. I don't think I'll ever want to do that again, but it's also like, like <laughs> so it's pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> I got it too. Yeah. Because I just, uh, I just hit my head 
Oh, and, yeah, you did. And I had like small, this cut. Yeah. It was like the worst thing. I thought, <laughs> oh my God, I was so, I was so worried because I had hit my head and I had this cut and I thought, oh my God, this is going to be on a wedding. Volta is going to hate all the pictures no, and everything. No. And then thank God that this woman came in with an airbrush <laughs> and I don't know what type of magic she worked, but <laughs> yeah. she was like, gone. Yeah, it's like Photoshop IRL in real life. Yes, I was masked. <laughs> yeah, you were. <laughs> Oh my gosh, thank you so much, yes. Tiffany, Delphine, I, Becca, David. Thank you guys so much for joining. Yes, and Delphine remembers the shirts too, and she's significantly younger than us, I believe. Oh, the, the airbrush shirts yes. with the beach stuff. Yes. Okay, yeah, I, I didn't have that experience, but I guess you guys did, no, so that's no. cool. Okay, well, <laughs> you had to have been there. I had to be there. <laughs> Yes, um, but, I won't talk about the references of uh, Daniel Smith from right. your childhood, yeah. which is the most generic American name that they use. They literally use it. Volta's English teacher laughed at her. She thought she was joking when she said that her husband's name was Daniel Smith. Yeah, because all the like schools, like in Moldova, I was, I was learning English in school and like in the books, the examples they use, like, you know, you say, Jane Doe or whatever, like as yeah. a generic name. Well, they use Daniel Smith in like all the examples. And and then look at me, I am married to one. <laughs> Becca's asking. Oh, we're also, uh, Becca, thank you. Uh, this stream goes on to on LinkedIn, YouTube, and Facebook. Uh, and we're here every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central. So I hope you come back. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, if you have any questions about watercolors, um, happy to answer anything. And Dan can help with the cocktail portion because I I leave that up to him. Um, but very excited for next week. We have a really fun cocktail, very unexpected. You will think like, what? This is crazy. Why are you doing this? Why are you using this ingredient in a cocktail? And you guys, it's 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 so fun to yeah. paint. But also, it's delicious. Yes, and also somewhat Eastern European inspired. Yes, yes, very much so. Mm, stay yeah. tuned. Stay oh, tuned. The, the suspense <laughs> is just tasty. <laughs> <laughs> I can eat it. Uh, all, right. all right. Bye, everyone. Thank, Thank you, you so all. much. Have a good rest of your week. <laughs>